Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are reviewing another integrated amplifier, but this one's a little bit different in that it is a hybrid integrated amplifier. And that's right, we are reviewing Heaven 11 Audio's Billy integrated amplifier. Let's take a look. So Heaven 11 Audio, the company that makes the Billy integrated amplifier that we're reviewing today, reached out to me over social media having been fans of this channel and asked if I would be interested in giving their Billy integrated amp a review. And I got to be honest with you, much like the last couple of products uh, that I have reviewed, I didn't know about the Billy integrated amp. And so after going to their website, taking a peek at it, uh, suffice to say, I was very interested and thus the Billy integrated arrived on my doorstep. So the Billy integrated amplifier is a hybrid stereo integrated amplifier. And what I mean by hybrid is it uses both tubes and solid state, more specifically class D amplification in its amplifier stage. And the idea behind this and the reason why you may have seen other hybrid integrated amplifiers in the past is because in the preamp stage, tubes are known for their warmth, their smoothness, their harmonics, whereas in the amplifier stage, you sometimes might want solid state or class D for its raw horsepower grunt and control. And so having a hybrid integrated amp that uses tubes in the preamp section and class D power in the amplifier section, you're kind of in theory, getting the best of both worlds. At least that is the thinking that went into the design of the Billy Integrated. Now the Billy Integrated amp is made in Canada. This is not a Chinese product. This is kind of a, I don't wanna say hand built, but it definitely has a bespoke nature or quality to it. And as a result, it carries a price tag of $1,450 here in the States. And what that $1,450 gets you is a very, very unique piece of kit in that I don't think you will have come across an integrated amplifier quite like the Billy, at least not in the looks department. It is a very minimal uh, design. In fact, this thing is so minimal, there's not even input labels. There are but six little hashes above the input selection knob and they simply glow amber when that input is selected and they glow blue when it is on the Bluetooth uh, input. So you kind of have to memorize a little bit like which slash equals which input because there are no labels. As for the volume control, well, uh, there is a flat bottom or flat portion of the volume control. When the flat portion is facing at 12 o'clock, the amp is off. But the second you turn it past 12 o'clock and continue to turn it all the way to 11, that's right, this amplifier goes to 11 for all you Spinal Tap fans out there, uh, the amp goes into kind of a power up, like a slow power up uh, process, which does take a little bit of time. And then from there, you can just adjust the volume accordingly. But again, you're kind of just doing it by taste because there isn't a readout. There's nothing on a screen or in an app or whatever that would tell you that you are at, say, 50 or 30 or 60%. Like I said, it goes from off to 11. If you really stop and think about it, the Billy, for as simple as it is, it really does kind of have all of your bases covered. Digging a little deeper or going underneath or under the hood of the Billy, you will find that the amplifier section is ice power. Now, if those of you that may not know what ice power is, it is an offshoot or was an offshoot of Bang & Olufsen. It's a class D amplifier design. It's been around forever. It's bulletproof and to be 100% honest, I happen to really like the way ICE amps sound. The ICE modules inside the Billy amp are rated at 60 watts per channel into eight ohms, and they do double down into 120 watts into four. So for a lot of people, that's enough juice. It really is. And in my system, it powered my JBL L100 classics. Very nice, very nice. I didn't feel at any moment 
My JBLs were necessarily starving for power, nor did I feel I was fully taxing the amplifier itself. But there were some instances maybe when the source component I was choosing to use forced me to have to drive the Billy amplifier a little bit harder than other sources. And I'll get to that in just a moment. So all the technical stuff out of the way, what does the Billy integrated amp sound like? Do the tubes really make that big of a difference? And I have to tell you, I think they do. I think the tubes matter. Now, I don't want to go so far as to say that the tubes make the Billy night and day different or drastically different than, say, another integrated amplifier that may also use ICE power or even the exact same ICE modules found in the Billy amp. But what I will say, or what you can expect to hear to a certain degree from the Billy is an incredibly smooth, warm, and non-fatiguing top end with a bottom end that is very grippy and fast. And that's just kind of a hallmark of Class D amplifiers in general. In my experience, I find Class D amplifiers, in my experience, to have a very articulate, fast, grippy, not grunty, grippy bass and bottom octaves. Now, Class A, Class AB amps may plunge a little bit deeper, may go a little bit deeper, may cause those those bass drivers in your speakers to just hit a little bit harder. I just want to throw it out there that on a whole, I find the ICE amps inside the Billy to be about speed, attack, and decay, and energy. With I mean, not energy in the sense that they're super bright or they're thin, but they're just about the speed, the arrival, that, that impact, and then the decay. And they're not so much about kicking you in the crotch or in the stomach and really kind of churning your bowels up. Now, that's where the ice modules kind of are their strongest because as you go up the frequency range, I think you get a little bit more of that tube coloration and it is coloration. So you have to decide for yourself, is that a trait? Is that a sonic signature that you like? I happen to really like tubes. I'm a tube guy. I think they're sexy. I think they're cool. And like a cartridge on a turntable, tubes enable you to kind of EQ the sound of your loudspeakers or your system. Because some tubes have more of a signature sound than others. Now, the input tubes that come with the Billy, I think are rather neutral. They don't have a lot of character outside of just being tubes. So as a result, your mid-range through the Billy is very smooth. There's still a lot of texture and nuance, but it is incredibly, incredibly smooth. There's not a lot of grain, but the tubes do bring out um, a, lot of, a lot more nuance uh, than some other amplifiers that I have reviewed recently. And they're, it's not like, whoa, they're, 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 they're shining a magnifying glass on stuff, but they do, they do kind of pull apart the harmonics just a little bit better. You're going to like what the tubes bring to the party here. You know, background vocals, like I said, background vocals, harmonies, uh, subtle inflections in the in the throats of the performers themselves. These are all rendered with such fervor through the Billy as a result of that tube uh, that tube preamp stage being there, and I found it to just be wonderful. I absolutely loved it, and the same goes for the high frequencies because the highs were just really smooth and the air and decay and the things that, that, that I kind of listen for to judge an amplifier on you know, its signature, I would say that the, the, the high frequencies through the Billy were like the mid-range in that they're very smooth, very composed, and possess a great deal of air. And just that, like I said, it just kind of grabs the note, grabs the instrument, and just kind of expands it. Just, just expands it just a little bit. And I love that. Soundstage wise, um, it's not the most enveloping or crazy wide, crazy deep soundstage. Everything's kind of appropriate, but it's much more, in my opinion, 
um, intimate of a soundstage. It's not going to blow out all the walls of your of your room and uh, you know put you in the center of a giant concert hall. It's a much more subdued, articulate, private, sultry uh, kind of performance. Um, dynamics are also very, very good. They're strong, but again, because I think of that tube input stage, they're not as boisterous. They're not as boom. Like the bass does have the speed, but the mid-range and treble don't quite have the exact level of attack, the same type of attack. And as a result, on a whole, the Billy integrated amplifier is going to be on the more romantic, smoother, um, not lean. It's not lean. It has body, but it's definitely on the smoother, more romantic side of neutral. And I want to stress this too, that the sound I just described, you will experience throughout all of its various inputs, including its phono stage. I find the internal phono stage to be rather great. It paired nicely with my U-turns. It paired nicely with the Music Hall Classic that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. And even if your, your turntable has a built-in preamp like the Music Hall does or the U-turn Orbit Special does, taking that directly into one of the Billy's analog inputs, you still get kind of the same sound that I have just described. Now, one of the caveats that I am going to point out about the Billy has to do with its Bluetooth connection. If I'm just using Bluetooth to stream Tidal or Spotify, the, the, the signal, the incoming signal um, is strong enough that I have plenty of gain and plenty of oomph and grunt. Connecting via Bluetooth from my TV to the Billy integrated amp, I'm not sure what's at fault. I guess the Hisense H8F, it's, it's output or, or it's input or whatever it is, it's Bluetooth signal is on the lower side. And as a result, when connecting it via Bluetooth to the Billy in order to watch TV through my JBLs, I really felt like I had to turn it up. I had to turn up the Billy a little bit more than any other input or, in, or source that I used in my time with the amplifier. So yes, I just wanted to point that out so that you're kind of aware that you may have to ride the Billy's volume knob just a little bit depending on your source of choice. But outside of all of that, I did. I found the Billy integrated amp to be a rather phenomenal sounding integrated amplifier. And I thought that the presence of the tubes themselves was a nice addition and something that I do believe makes a difference and that even a novice two tubes would notice straight away. So what don't I like about the Billy integrated amplifier? Well, there are a number of things that I, I don't want to say that I, I dislike them, but I definitely think that they are worth mentioning and that they may be deal breakers for some of you. Number one, there's no remote control. You have to manually get up and adjust the volume of the Billy amp as well as change inputs all manually. And that in 2019, 2020, eh, you know, that's old school. <laughs> that's old school. And I have to say the input knob on the Billy amp is very sexy. It, I love the wood. I think the, the wood on the amplifier itself is a great look, but there's quite a bit of play in that input selection knob. And I get that it is dual featured in the sense that if you push it in, it, it mutes the system, push it again and it unmutes. But, and so there, that may have to, that may explain the, the, the play in that knob, but it's not as positive feeling as the very large uh, volume knob. Other things that I don't care for, um, when the Billy is powered off and you turn it on for the first time, there is a startup procedure, in which case the tubes will kind of blink uh, while they're slowly powering up. The whole system is waking up, powering on, things like that. It's not, um, it's not like a noisy process. It's not like the Marantz, but it takes a hot second. The other thing, and this is a noticeable thing that you have to be aware of, but it's not uncommon with tube-based electronics, the Billy is not silent. And what I mean by that is as you turn the volume up, there is some audible hiss 
that will come through your loudspeakers tweeters. Now for me, I had to turn it up to, if you take the volume knob again, to about nine o'clock, um, and then everything else from nine to 11, remember it goes to 11, that hiss would be you know pretty, pretty loud. Um, if you're at like six o'clock and you know, from off to about six o'clock, the hiss really isn't gonna be noticeable at all. It's not like music or your movies have this just constant hiss in them. You're not gonna notice it there. But like say between tracks, you know, uh, you will hear that very, very subtle hiss uh, from your system. So not a deal breaker for me, but it is present. Um, and it's something that unlike say with the crown amps where you can kind of combat that and adjust the crown itself to get rid of that You don't have that capability here with the Billy. But yeah, that that really is my take on the Billy integrated amplifier I I, I have to say it is one of the more unique pieces that I've ever had the privilege of reviewing and as a result it has turned into one of the more enjoyable experiences that I've had with an integrated amplifier and I absolutely love the thing. I think it looks great. It's very, very much a, 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 an attention grabber. Uh, it does spark conversation, but more than that, I, I just think that because it's just, it is unique and it has a hand-built quality, there is somewhat of a different type of appreciation for it on a whole. And as a result, it made me really like it. I do. I really, really like the Billy Integrated Amp, and I do happen to just think that it also sounds freaking great. That's my review of the Billy Integrated Amplifier from Heaven 11 Audio. Let me know what you guys think of this very unique hybrid integrated amplifier down in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, for subscribing, for commenting, for just everything that you do. And for being so kind to my wife, Christy, on her birthday the other day. I sincerely appreciate it, everyone, and she appreciates it as well. So until next time, remember, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.